All right, Rob, you wrote a column today on, speaking of deadspin.com, where you write for. The other day. Uh, you wrote a column today. Earlier this week. Yeah, er, I'm sorry, earlier this week. Uh, why aren't black men getting the big NFL TV analyst gigs? And it just kind of, you can summarize it and then we'll discuss. Well, Chris, we're seeing unbelievable contracts for guys, Right. And the one thing they all have in common, they're, they're highly paid. I'm talking about the, the, the super paid TV analysts. We just saw Troy Aikman, after 20 years on Fox, head to ESPN to do Monday Night Football, Chris. Five years, $92 million. Did you hear me? Is this on? Can you hear me? That's way more than he ever dreamed about making. Chris, are you kidding? <laughs> I, hey, and I'm not mad way at Troy more. Aikman. I'm I'm not, dude. You know how much you're worth, Chris. You're worth what someone's willing to pay you. So right. I'm not mad at Troy Aikman. Right. And then you know Drew Brees is going to take over for Chris Collinsworth. You know Al Michaels is already rumored to go to Amazon. They're making a change. Mike Tirico is going to do Sunday Night Football, replacing. Uh, Al Michaels and Drew Brees, right, who who bumped Rodney Harrison out of the studio, Chris, in the studio show, right, with Tony Dungy. He's going to now move into the broadcast booth with Tariko. They've done some games together. And in the other job, we know Tony Romo's making $18 million a year, basically a million dollars a game, right, 17 games. He's making like $18 million. My biggest issue is we see a lot of black players on television, Chris, ESPN, NFL Network, all of that. They're all over. Fox right? for FS1. In those jobs. Yep, all over. But they're not in that coveted big chair, the number two on the national games, and the only guy I do remember, and I'm talking about when it was prominent, was OJ back in the 80s. Yep. He did it for two years, Chris. Do you remember that when OJ was on Monday yeah, Night Football? He, uh, and and it didn't one off season, didn't he take the bass out of his voice? Yes. Really? <laughs> he did. Right. He right. took the that. bass out of his voice. He was a little too um I wasn't feeling that. No, okay, but that I'm that not was OJ. feeling changing your tone of voice. No. You should speak be proper who you English. Are. Yes, speak no, proper English. Be who English. you are. Be who you are. But be who you are. And then Chris Use your regular late. voice. ESPN brothers, downgraded. Brothers, listen, brothers, use your regular voice. I'm telling y'all. No, no, no doubt. But then, Chris, of late, ESPN Monday Night Football became downgraded. Would you admit that? Like the like they didn't put into the whole this, this past year. The last couple of years. Yeah, they really, yeah, yeah. They right, had Booger after, McFarlane, after, um, right. Steve And then Levy, they took him out of the booth and they put him on Lewis a tractor. Riddick. You remember right. that? <laughs> like, like, like they were doing all kinds of crazy stuff. But, but those guys, Booger and, right. and Lewis Riddick, they were not making eighteen million dollars, Chris, to be color analysts. I got a problem with why there hasn't been to this point a black analyst on the major primetime broadcast. And I know the pregame show, hey, you got James Brown. Hey, you got Michael Strahan. I'm not, I'm not saying that there aren't any opportunities, but the big paying jobs and the biggest ones have so far not had that guy in there. And here's my example. I get, Troy Aikman, he was with the Dallas Dynasty, Chris. They won three out of four Super Bowls, all that. I get it. But he didn't play by himself. Emmett Smith was on that team, and I know Emmett wasn't the greatest broadcaster. He tried it. He wasn't good at it. But Michael Irvin was on that team as well. And Michael Irvin is a damn good broadcaster, entertaining. He's kind of like a maybe, – maybe you might call him like a poor man's Barkley. Yes. Chris, he, He's he has such He's a good. personality. Am I right? And he, he, he knows the game. He, he sounds great. All the other stuff. But, but he's never been in that position. So that was really what the column was, was about why we haven't seen a guy there. And then you could say, well, it's only quarterbacks. That's all they, they only want quarterbacks. It wasn't always like that. Frank Gifford well, wasn't Chris, a quarterback. Chris Collinsworth. Chris Collinsworth is a wide receiver. Thank you. 
and John Madden was a coach. Um, who else am I thinking uh, from the Raiders? Oh, God. John Gruden was a coach. So you can't use that, that it's that it's always been quarterback. Even Pat Summerall, Chris, was a kicker, Pat right, Summerall. Right, right, right. So, so it's not based on that, and yet we've never seen, other than O.J. for those couple of years on Monday Night Football in the 80s, and I'm not ignoring him, and the cup of coffee and sweet roll that Lewis Riddick, Riddick got and Booger McFarlane, other than that, we've been shut out. And I'm talking about black guys who have <clears> played in the league have been shut out of that job. And I'm still waiting for them to pay a black man $18 million to call 817 football game. Look, it, 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 you make some good points. Uh, and Kyrie's got 60. Uh, How much time? Eight, minute, eight and a half minutes left. I don't, I don't think he's coming back in. I think that's a franchise record. They might have left him in long enough to do that. Um, but they're up 37. So he just... Just drilled a three in somebody's face for for sixty. So I think sixty's he's a good night. He's he kind of yeah. Done. He kind of yeah. I get it. I mean, and he kind of pointed to the bench. I think they all knew um, get him out. But great night by Kyrie Irving. Um, but to your point, I think you make some good points um, because those are the the money that they're throwing out is humongous. And other than OJ Simpson, you're right. Nobody black has been in that role. I'm and, and not Chris, tripping you know on it because it's let only me, a handful of guys. Okay, uh, let me let me let me make this point. One last one. I'm sorry because I left it out, and this is the big one. This is the one that tipped me to write this column. Kirk Herbstreit got the Amazon job. Chris never played in the NFL. He's Mr. College Football, and even in that spot, they gave it to somebody who didn't even play in the league. And I'm not saying that doesn't mean. He can't talk about the game or analyze no, the he's game. Been great he played with college he, football. He, great. He played. He was a quarterback at Ohio State. I know his right. resume. Okay, so I'm not saying he's not qualified, but even that job, Chris, even that job with Amazon went to another yeah, white guy. I, 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 like I said, I, I, you make some good points. You make some interesting points. Um, I'll tell you this though, I would rather have Mike Tirico. Because he's going to be doing it, right? He's replacing Al Michaels. I'd rather have him in there. Not that it has to only be one, so I'm not saying that. But I'd rather have Mike Tirico in there than another athlete. Now, let me ask you this. Mike Tirico says he's not black, so does he count? When, when he gets stopped by the cops, I bet you they think he's black. <laughs> <laughs> and he said that decades ago. Is he still rolling with that? He, he's Is Italian. He still with that? Well, what, what is his dad Italian? His he mom's says he's black. Italian. Is that what it he is? Says he, he's does Italian. he say that now? Yes, he does not claim that. So he that doesn't he's black. say he's black? He's Italian. I'm saying he's black. I bet you his birth certificate says black. I don't know, but I'm I'm betting. But what anyway, got... what was that, Rob G? Rob Parker is 100% factual on this. No, Am I, I right, know Rob that G? way back when I think he was in co- or just no, got out of college. No, he still says it. In the recent. 80s, he in, said in, in it. In oh, recent. Few years, he so said he, that he, he claims not, not to be black? Okay. So I guess I, I guess we can't claim Tariqa. <laughs> All right. But my point is I'd rather a black person in that seat who wasn't an athlete because it shouldn't have to be Oh, the black guys are athletes. And obviously no, we're that. examples in Stephen A. Smith. You know, there's a lot of non-black athletes on there. But there's a ton of black athletes. You know, and um, and and they're obviously, I mean, you look at ESPN, the guys talking football, ton of them are black. Look at our station. Ton of them. Are, like, if black men are all over the sports landscape in front of the cameras. And now... To your point, Rob, they're not making, you know, the 18, 19, or $17 million a year that these other guys are making, and you're working much harder. Oh, you, you're working you know? way hard. Chris, now, I those do think NFL the jobs paid, might be the best jobs in the country right. where you work 18. Chris, you work 17 weekends a year, right. and you make a million dollars a week? You like uh, here's the I think the argument, you don't have to pay those guys that much, and they're doing they it. They do right, <laughs> but I I just think there's so many brothers on television. Like I said, you make some interesting points that there are none in that role, 
But there's so many black men on television calling sports, including football, uh, including baseball, Rob, to be honest. I, you probably got to, at least nationally. Now, I, I'm sure it's not the case locally. But when you look at national games as far, in terms of, you know, the Fox show and all that, you got more blacks on, in the studio percentage-wise than on the field. Right. So I just think, you know, I'm not about calling everything racism. Um, I'm obviously outspoken about it when I believe it exists. I don't know that that's what this is. I mean, you got the NBC Sunday night countdown show. Yeah. Tony I, Dungy, Tarico, Rodney Harrison. Ain't nobody, I will none of say those this, guys Drew making Brees, $18 million no, a year. And, I, and, I hear, and that's why I said it's something that you could, you know, it's, I'm not ripping you for it. Um, but no, Stephen A. Smith, outside of those guys, who's making more than Stephen A. Smith? You know, on that in that role. This, uh, at ESPN. Stephen, a, Stephen A. Smith works 10 times he as hard works, as... He does. But I'm make, saying there's to, a I'm lot of saying, white guys that work as hard as Steve and don't get that money, too. Oh, I, Steve has been... he He's put in the work. He's on 18 Oh, no, and I'm not things. saying he doesn't deserve it. I'm just saying the highest paid dude at ESPN outside of calling those games is a brother. Yeah, but I, but but it's it's, def- so it's a different workload. Oh, it's a different your- profile. That's right. all I'm saying. He is, works his butt would, off, but like, so do you and I. No, we, I get we, that. And so do a lot of people and they're, that aren't black, that aren't getting that money. I'm just saying I'd look at it closely before I'm ready to just rant about it. Um, but, you know, like I said, I think you make interesting points. And I will throw this out, Rob. Drew Brees. I don't – Drew is okay. I, like, I think Troy Aikman's excellent. I think uh, Tony Romo's very good. Drew is okay. Like, Drew, Drew hasn't blown me away on, you know, NBC count, NFL countdown. And so that's something, I don't know what he's making, um, but that's something you'd look at and say, man, you know, is that, is that fair? So, like I said, I, I, I think you make some interesting points, but um, – I think but there's also go a with ton the of brothers Chris on, is going on with the network. TV. He's going to say the brother's wrong. He's going with the network. No, I'm just saying. I mean, it's the brothers all over the place, man, calling or Nash in front of the camera calling games uh, or, or at least, uh, you know, on talking sports. Let's put it that way.